The violence between Israel and Palestinians has escalated rapidly. Hamas is launching rocket attacks on Israel. Israel's carrying out airstrikes in Gaza. Egypt and Syria are at war with Israel today for the first time since the Six-Day War of 1967. Eleven Arab countries cut off all oil shipments to the United States. We are heading for the most acute shortages of energy since World War II. Uh, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, came, visited there as the first Indian Prime Minister in July uh, 2017. And since then, uh, the relationship has really taken off. Hi everybody, the Israel-Palestine conflict is one of the longest and one of the most critical geopolitical conflicts in the world. And while most of us might ignore it thinking it to be yet another conflict, I got to tell you that every time this conflict escalates, it literally shakes up the economy of every single country on the planet including India, UK, France and even the United States of America. And in India, some of the most critical events were influenced or caused due to the Arab-Israeli rivalry, including the emergency of 1975. And just like India was at the crossroads to choose a side in Russia-Ukraine conflict, we have been on the crossroads of Israel-Palestine conflict for 70 long years. And just like the Russia situation, even a slight diplomatic miscalculation here and there could threaten both our defense and our economy. So in this episode today, let's try to understand what exactly is the Israel-Palestine conflict all about, why is this conflict so critical for the world economy and most importantly, why is this extremely critical for India in the 21st century. This video is brought to you by Coding Invaders but more on this at the end of the video. This is a story that dates way back to early 1900s. During this time, Israel did not exist as a nation and the Jewish community did not have a specific country for themselves. So they were scattered all around the world. And this region that we know today as Israel, Gaza and West Bank had both Jews and Arabs people living. Now, if you look at the world map before World War I, you will see that the world was actually ruled by empires. We had empires like the British Empire, the French Empire, the Prussian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. But after World War I in 1918, the British took control of both Palestine and the Jordan region. And while Palestine remained under the control of the Brits, other countries in the Middle East eventually became independent nations. This was when the Brits decided to give a separate country for the Jews under something called the Balfour Declaration of 1917. So from 1922 to 1947, when the Jews were being persecuted in Europe, millions of Jews started migrating to Palestine under the allowance of the Brits. And this is where the tensions between both these communities started rising. But soon enough, World War II started in 1939 and lasted till 1945. And because of the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, again, millions of Jews migrated to British Palestine. And this further increased the conflicts between the Arabs and the Jews. So when things started going out of control, the United Nations decided to partition the region so that both Arabs and Israelis have their own nation. But the catch over here was this region called Jerusalem. For those who don't know, Jerusalem is a sacred place for three major religions, that is for Christians, Muslims and Jews. So the United Nations proposed to partition this land into three parts. The Arab regions, a Jewish region and the city of Jerusalem was to be kept under the United Nations as an international city. This is how the nation of Israel was formed on 14th of May 1948. But while the Jews were settled with whatever they got, the Arabs were not at all happy about it. So you know what, to protest against this move, five Arab countries that is Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon and Syria, all of them together attacked Israel. But guess what, these armies were so bad with their coordination that the Israelis did not just defeat them but also went on to conquer more lands of the Arabs including the western half of Jerusalem. And if you look at the map, after the war, the Israelis captured the western part of Jerusalem, the eastern part of Gaza and even the northern region of Acre. So this is how the map of Israel changed after the first Arab-Israeli war. And then Gaza Strip got occupied by Egypt and East Jerusalem and the West Bank got occupied by Jordan. So again, just like any other war, millions of people fled from Israel to the Arab countries and people from the Arab countries came to Israel. This is when the second part of the story began with something called the Swiss Crisis. 
For those who don't know, Swiss Canal is one of the most important choke points in the world. And if you look at the map, it's a narrow canal of just 193 kilometers that connects the Mediterranean with the Red Sea. And the reason why the Swiss Canal is considered to be super super important is because if this canal is choked, the ships going from Europe to Asia would have to go all the way around Africa, which would add another 20 extra days of travel time. And this would eventually increase the cost of shipping and then the cost of goods. In fact, because of the Swiss Canal, the distance between India and Europe has been reduced by 7000 kilometers and it saves 23 days of shipping time on average. Today, approximately 12% of the global trade passes through the Swiss Canal, representing 30% of all global container traffic and over $1 trillion worth of goods per annum. And we all saw what happened when a ship got stuck at Swiss Canal last year. This is one of the biggest container ships in the world. 20,000 of those containers that you see on the back of 18 wheelers, there's 20,000 of those on this. The worst case, Joe, is the Suez Canal, we all know one of the most important waterways, transit points, pubs, whatever, in the world could be closed for weeks. The urgent effort to dislodge a cargo ship stuck in the Suez Canal, blocking a key global trading route. Peter Long cargo ship, the Ever Given, is stuck in the Suez Canal and it is fouling up global trade. This is a traffic jam like no other. So basically, Suez Canal was super, super important to Europe. But since it fell in the Egyptian territory, in 1956, the Egyptian president Gamal Nasser decided to nationalize the Swiss Canal Company, which was owned by the Brits and the French. So then, Egypt was about to make a lot of money out of shipping traffic in the Swiss Canal. So this is fantastic, right? The Swiss Canal fell into the Egyptian territory and they could become super rich by charging a premium toll for its access. So what's wrong with it? Well, as it turns out, the only thing wrong about it was that the Brits and French did not like it. And apparently, the Brits and French were scared that Egypt might actually close this canal and cut off shipments of petroleum flowing from Persian Gulf to Western Europe. And if this had happened, the European trade would have been in a catastrophe. And obviously, if any other country rises to power, the Brits don't like it. And just because the Brits don't like it, it automatically becomes wrong, right? So guess what? Britain and France secretly prepared a military action to regain control of the Swiss Canal and to overthrow the president of Egypt. And their ally to fight this war was none other than Israel. Now the question over here is, why did Israel jump in over here and what does Egypt have to do with Israel? Well, as it turns out, Egypt had actually blocked Israeli ships from passing through the Swiss Canal and also began to block traffic through the Straits of Tehran. And if you look at the map, it is another important narrow passage of water linking the Israeli ports to the Red Sea. So if this passage is blocked, it cuts off Israel's sole outlet to the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. As a result, both foreign ships carrying goods to and from Israel had to travel a long and costly route from the Atlantic to Israel's Mediterranean ports. This is what gave rise to the Second Arab-Israeli War, which was fought by British, French and Israeli forces against Egypt in 1956. And in just five days, the Israeli army captured Gaza, Rafah and al arish taking thousands of prisoners and occupying most of the Sinai Peninsula to the east of the Swiss Canal. But soon enough, Uncle Sam came to the party and the United Nations asked the British, French and Israeli forces to pull out. Now, although Israel did not win the freedom to use the Swiss Canal, it got shipping rights in the Strait of Tehran. So again, the tensions between Jews and Arabs remained. By the way, back then we were close allies to the Arabs. Why? Because they were the suppliers of oil and we could not mess with them. I'll give you a link to how actually Nehruji handled this situation in the description. And then came the third Arab-Israeli war in 1967, which was fought by Egypt, Iraq, Syria and Jordan on one side and the Israelis on the other side. This war broke out due to multiple reasons like terror attacks, attacks on farms and water projects. And even this time, the Israelis somehow emerged victorious and in just six days, Israelis captured and took control of the Gaza Strip, Golan Heights and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. On top of that, they drove the Jordanian forces from the West Bank and more importantly, the Israelis were left in sole control of Jerusalem. Now do you see what happened? If Israel was in control of the Sinai Peninsula, they could then go on to take control of the super critical Swiss Canal itself. This is the reason why Egypt blocked Swiss Canal for 8 long years from 1967 to 1975. So again, the entire world's trade was disrupted because one of the most important trade routes was choked, 
causing an economic crisis all across the world. This was the impact of the Arab-Israeli conflict. And between this time in 1973, on the holiest day of the Jews, Egypt and Syria again attacked Israel, starting the fourth Arab-Israeli war. But by this time, the most important thing that had changed in the world was the power of the Arabs. And if you remember, by this time, all the oil producing countries had formed the OPEC in 1960 and the Middle Eastern countries commanded extraordinary leverage over the world with oil. So you know what? During this time in 1973, while the Americans supported the Israelis, the Arabs got so annoyed at the Americans that they purposefully decreased the production of oil and quadrupled the price of oil. And because of this, the price of oil went from less than $3 a barrel to almost $12 a barrel in 1974. And this again sent shockwaves all across the world. Egypt and Syria are at war with Israel today for the first time since the Six Day War of 1967. The shooting stopped, the delicate equilibrium was restored. But the Arabs made an economic power play. As punishment for this country's support of Israel, 11 Arab countries cut off all oil shipments to the United States. We are heading for the most acute shortages of energy since World War II. With the oil embargo, an existing gasoline shortage became worse. Heating oil also was in short supply. There was a dire shortage of fuel in the US and in India, our oil bills went from just $500 million to $1.3 billion, which is from 20% of our exports to around 40% of our potential export earnings. As a result, our food production slowed down and while we were still recovering from our war with Pakistan in 1971, we had already had two failed monsoons. And all these events put together along with the political turmoil in India eventually landed us in an emergency in 1975. All these events almost crippled the entire Indian economy. This is the impact of geopolitics in the lives of ordinary people like you and me. Now coming back to Israel, with the support from the United States of America, the Israelis were able to defend their land against the Egyptians in the south and Syria from the north. And then, finally, the war came to an end with the signing of a disengagement agreement in 1974, after which Israel gave back Sinai to Egypt, some parts of the Golan Heights were given to Syria, and Egypt opened the Swiss Canal. Now, after these wars, multiple events happened. A Sunni organization called Hamas started rising, which wanted to liberate Palestine. Then, they got categorized as terrorists by many countries. And on the other side, the Israeli citizens started moving into Jerusalem. In the 1990s, peace talks began. In 1995, there was an agreement for a Palestinian authority to be established in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And then, after another decade of violence that did not lead to war, Hamas came to power in Gaza. And from then onwards, Israel has been in conflict with Gaza till 2022. Now, even after 25 years, there are four questions that remain unanswered. Number one, what should happen to Palestinian refugees? Number two, whether Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank should stay or be removed? Number three, whether the two sides should share Jerusalem or not? And perhaps the most tricky of all is whether a Palestinian state should be created alongside Israel or not? And although peace talks have been taking place on and off for more than 25 years, so far, the conflict has not been resolved. So now, while a group named Palestine Islamic Jihad has a hold over the West Bank and some parts of Gaza, Gaza is mostly controlled by the Hamas. So Israel and these groups keep on having conflicts from time to time. And the reason why I am not giving you a concrete reason is because nobody really knows what is the reason. While media houses favoring Israel say that PIG was about to attack Israel, the ones supporting the Arabs say that the Israeli government is doing this to regain power in the upcoming elections. And regardless of who's right or not, one thing for sure is that innocent people are dying and the number of refugees has kept on increasing. This is the story of the 100 year Israel-Palestine conflict. Now the question over here is, what does India have to do with all of this and why should we be concerned about this conflict? Before we move on, let me thank our partners of this episode and that is Coding Invaders. People, the Indian economy has got over its bad days and it is now one of the world's fastest growing economies. But even then, this growth is still not translating into enough jobs for the waves of educated young people who enter the labor force each year. And that's where Coding Invaders come in. 
They help you switch from a non-IT profession to IT for high paying jobs within 6 to 8 months as a data analyst. And their current placement stats stand at 93%. The best part is before you enroll for the courses, they provide you guaranteed job agreement with a money back guarantee. So basically, if you do not get placed, you will get a 100% refund. Their courses have real business case studies, job oriented projects and assignments which are designed by industry experts from Amazon, Philips, Deloitte and others. Even a civil engineer like me with a non IT background will be able to learn data science and be eligible for high paying IT jobs such as a data analyst. So in simple words, you do not need a coding background to get into such a job. Coding invaders have helped 20,000 plus candidates secure 10 to 25 LPA packages in the past 6.5 months with the help of their 300 plus hiring partners. So if this interests you, click the link in the description and use the code TS30 to get 30% fee discount in the job guarantee batch. Moving on to India's stake in this conflict, the first stake is that we have established very close relations with Israel since 1992. There are over 300 investments from Israel in India in both tech and agriculture, and our bilateral trade excluding defense stood at 5.65 billion dollars as of 2018 and 19. Secondly, the Israelis have been extremely helpful to us with their military aid during our war with China in 19. 62 they trained a special protection group and national security guard in 1980 and now india is the largest purchaser of israeli made arms with orders worth 1 billion dollars per year this is the reason why in 2017 modi ji became the first indian prime minister to visit israel so if we go against israel it is going to affect our defense partnership with one of the most powerful nations in the world and lastly we cannot go against the arabs because they could choke our oil imports and that could cause an economic nightmare this is the reason why i said that even a slight diplomatic miscalculation could affect our economy and defense severely so as a citizen of india do keep an eye on what is our stand on the arab israeli conflicts That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. And also, don't forget to check out Coding Invaders from the link in the description.